Welcome back to another great episode of the Ashy Knuckles podcast. I am Johnny Dubs, and here with me are my esteemed and highly respected co-hosts, Marky G and Mosey P. Today, we will be talking about the recent middleweight beatdown and the current state of the division, as well as talking about the lightweight division. Okay, to start off. Well, I was trying right, to give you that freebie. Sorry, Mark. I got I got to get this out of here right now. I was it. trying to give you the freebie, John. But the one-sided beatdown was Jared Cannonier trying to make Marvin Vittori look more like Sloth from the Goonies. You could have used that one, but you didn't. For uh for the, you know, millennials and zoomers out there. The Goonies was a really popular movie back in the day. In the 1900s. Before cell phones. I mean, it's a cult classic. It is. You should go back and watch it. It'll scare your children. Uh, baby. Ruth. Well, actually, what you should be doing is watching our old episodes of our wonderful podcast. There you go, John. Let them know. Let them know. Watching or listening. Great for Alright, Mark, go ahead and lead off with this uh this great clash in the middleweight division between number three and four, who's probably gonna switch spots in the rankings. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Jerry Cannonier is gonna jump up one spot and take up that number three spot there. But Jerry Cannonier just put on a master class of patience in that fight and stamina and then you have Vittori on the other end putting on a master class of heart and wondering why his corner is not throwing in a towel but this was a classic to some I think it was a one sided beat down so I can't really call it a classic but I will say that it was definitely a highlight of the card that I didn't expect much of. I personally think that fight was a better, like, hi, hi, uh, you know, headliner than last week's headliner. Not the co main, but the main. You know, it, it that was a pay per view level fight. You know what I mean? It was. It, it, it hit everything you love. And how they they both survived that first round is is beyond me. I think if these guys showed how tough they are. Vittori, I scored it 10-8 uh, that second round. Um, I do kind of hope... I, I know we can't really do that, but I would love to see Rob fight Cannoneer. Because they have that mutual opponent, Vittori. And Izzy was talking about he wants new blood. So, I mean, they could let him fight Drickus and have Robert and Cannoneer fight. Now, if Drickus does pull a crazy win, maybe that's the fight they make as well. Cannoneer versus Whitaker. It didn't go well last time he fought Whitaker. Right, but, you know, things change, people learn, people grow. I mean, we were saying the things didn't go well for Izzy last time he fought Pera. Uh, he came out, hmm. people say, oh, it's, it, look at how Charles did against Islam last time. But we shall see. Well, they got the well, fight already locked in in, what, two weeks? Two weeks from this Saturday. So that's n definitely going to happen. DDP's fighting Whitaker in two weeks. Mm -hmm. Barring injury or... Well, that's locked in. It's got a date. Correct. Now, if then, uh, Robert the, the Whitaker the steps out, you never know. You never know. We could see Izzy possibly fighting in September 
Do they have a uh, fight card lined up for September already? Let's see. You know what I'm saying? If something were to fall out, then, you know, Buddy would probably get a title shot real quick. Fast track. He ain't beating uh, Buddy. Two, wait, wait, 293 would be September. Yeah, 293 is in September. Yeah. It, uh, no headliner yet, right? No, nope. to be denounced. Uh, before that, September 2nd is a Gone versus Vivat. That's a fight night in France. Why would they? They wouldn't do that. You know, no. all pay-per-views is for titles. The The fight night in France is just that. It'll be me, um, either it'll be an early card or me sleeping. 3 p.m. Eastern, so yeah, that's, uh... Uh, yeah, you'll be at work. I'll be just getting off. I'll probably be able to catch that one. The uh, the O'Malley card is looking a little weak, though. Well, let's get back on topic. We're talking about the middleweights here. We ain't talking about the future. The mm-hmm. only future we was talking about was the possibility of uh, DDP possibly getting a shot at uh, Israel Adesanya. So... These rankings right now, it has uh, Pereira as number one, but he said he's going up to 205, correct? Mm-hmm. But so, that doesn't mean he won't come back down. So that's sort of, you know what I mean? That's a uh, asterisk. The only way I see him coming back, I don't see him coming back down. I see him getting a uh, quick track to the title. If he beats Jan, he could possibly be next in line. Like, if he finishes Jan... Goes out there and starches him. <laughs> yeah, he probably oh. fights the winner of Jamal Hill and uh, Yuri when they get that said and done with. He said yeah. that he's uh, fine with the way things are with uh, him and Arasanya, but it, he's going to monitor the situation, and if he feels like it, he'll go back down. Like, he, he, he is a hater, which is why I think he's fighting Jan, because, you know, is he failed against Jan? So if he beats Jan... Then he gets fast back to the title. He, he might gets the title, and then we see uh, Izzy fight for the two hundred five belt against him. Right? Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I took that completely differently. I took that as if Izzy loses the belt, then I'll go back down, just because it'll be an easier way to a title. Well, I I think if. If he really was pushing for it, I think he could have easily lobbed to get a uh, trilogy. Probably fight one contender and then get it. Uh, US, like Dana would definitely have like put pressure on Izzy for that because uh, that Miami card sold crazy, Whoa. and the MSG card sold crazy as well. So like that 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 trilogy has potential to be a huge. But that's assuming Izzy is still champ. He has to face either DDP or Bobby Knuckles. Who do you see uh, uh, Pereira beating out of the top five, though? In which division? Middleweight. Middleweight. If he was to stay at middleweight. Who do you see him beating in the top <sighs> five? Uh, I could see him putting out Vittori. I could see him putting out... Uh, Kevin here. I, th- I think he... Because you got to keep in mind, like, Izzy was a master of keeping distance in distance fighting, and Perry can do the same thing. He's bigger than Izzy, and he has that freak power. You know what I mean? And we haven't seen how he does on, on the takedown. People, like, harped on that, but that was a, a slip and fall, you know? That wasn't... All right, and if you get him down for one round, are you going to be able to finish him? Well, he's Brazilian, man. He's got a black belt at birth. <laughs> right. He's got that racial bonus, and Glover is training him. So, every round starts on the feet. So, you got to get him down again, and that man has stone hands and a stone head. So, I, I think he could possibly beat all the guys in the top five. Like, he has, it's not just a fighter's chance, he has a pretty decent chance, because he's huge. Like, even uh, Robert Whitaker was like, 
Like, he, he kind of, uh, when he was talking about it, he's, like, kind of hesitant to even, like, entertain fighting him because it's, it's, like, an enormous task, right? Like, he's just so big in person when he when he met him. So, I, I, obviously, Robert Whitaker would go in the ring and fight him and do the best he could. But mm-hmm. striking with him is very dangerous. Trying to take him down is very dangerous because of his leg kicks. And if you try to leg kick him, he's just going to check every single one, shin to shin. Very few guys are, are able to do that. Like, Jan does that as well, very well. Which is why the Jan Pira, shin to shin, who's going to break first? Jan's, Jan has got the Polish power, but he's also old. Is that on the BMF car? has got the left hook dynamite. That fight's on the BMF the, um, But, Jared Cannonier, where do we go from here? Jared Cannonier is he, probably going to fight the so if, loser. If EDP um, wins, Whitaker. he's got to fight uh, Whitaker, right? But yeah, if EDP loses, where does he go? Well, he fights Can- Can- Are they going to match him up he's with Cannonier? Then that Cannonier is fighting lower down. Mm-hmm. But Izzy has said he has interest in fighting him. So, say you lose to pre, pre- and old, like. Well, you guys get rough. Hold on, hold on. What did you say, John? You, you uh, did cut out. out. You cut out. The boy cut Hello? out again. What did you say, John? You cut out. Oh. So I was saying, uh, DDP loses. Who does he fight? Does he fight Cannoneer? Yes. Probably. All right? Because, I mean, that's fighting downward, but Izzy does want to fight Dirkus. And just losing to the preennial, you know, champ, like... The mini-boss. Yeah, he's the mini-boss. Mm-hmm. He's like, he's Max Holloway. Yes. Sometimes you can't, like, that guy is harder to beat for everyone else than the champ is himself. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Mm-hmm. I, I'm sure there's some guy out there that could easily steamroll Volk, but loses to Max Holloway. You know what I mean? It could be Yair. Mm. Uh, I I wouldn't hold my breath on that. I think well, I don't know me either. But you never know. I I I I don't want to be a fanboy because I I initially didn't want to like him, but he's won me over. Who? Volkanovski. He has not, not, my like, respect. Not, not inside the ring, but like just his personality outside of it. Like I I. I would love to get, have, like, a, a pint with him. You know what I mean? He seems like a really genuine, cool dude. I mean, and, the majority uh, of these fighters are pretty... Uh, down to earth. Yeah, they're, like, down to earth. Except for some of those guys that are just nut jobs. Well, for him being, like, the man, right? Pound for pound, king. Uh, you know. Should be double champ. Yeah, all, all things considered, uh, you know, very very cool dude. Very interesting to see his fight go with Ayer. Uh, if he so if he loses, does he get an immediate rematch, or does uh, he? I say, think he does. So if he loses, does you? So he, I mean, he's one of the dominant chances where he can get the immediate rematch. Um, say he does that and wins belt back. Uh, then that means he didn't all that. Or if he does lose, does he just say, "Screw it, I'm burning the boat. I'm going up to lightweight. I know I can be a champ." Dude, if if he moves up to lightweight and Holloway moves up to lightweight like he intends on doing, <laughs> that division is gonna be crazy, stupid. Yeah. And Featherweight's going to be wide open. And that's a perfect time for Aljo and Sugar Sean to move up to Featherweight. Wait, wait, wait. Before we get into all that, because it's a good segue to it. All right. Cannoneer fights the loser out of Whitaker and DDP, correct? Right. Yes. That's where we're going with. Vittori, he, he already beat Costa, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
so it's uh, pretty intriguing with the middleweights. So, has Vittoria ever fought Sean Strickland? I don't believe so. Has Derek oh. Kennedy ever? Yeah, he did fight Sean Strickland. Okay. And it was a robbery. He won on paper, but Sean won that fight. That would be an interesting rematch, so, especially if Sean wins this next. I mean, it depends how these guys want to tell a story or what they want to do with this. Middleweight division's got a lot of options. You still got Paulo out there. Has Paulo ever fought Cannoneer? I don't think huh. so either. Is Paulo actually but, fighting uh, that, that uh, was it, a Sambo Chin champion Chin. or something? Uh, I, so one of my buddies made an uh, off-color joke about uh, Paul Costa. He, why did he ever expect a Brazilian worth more than $100,000 to ever work again? Because he got his money and he hasn't been doing anything. He's just been building his brand and fucking about. Well, if he is he had to heal from his hair plants, then that's 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 either Paulo is the gatekeeper for a possible Russian killer to step in the middleweight division. Well, so or not? Um, Cannoneer was asked in the post right conference about comes up and he said will that get me a title shot if that if they make that number into a contender fight yes i'll fight him otherwise no i'm i'm chasing the belt you know you you guys in the media hype him up but he's he's unranked in middleweight he's untested and you just was dismissing him so people uh like if you want to introduce comms to the middleweight you're gonna to have to pair him up with someone, and you're not going to be able to get Jared Cannonier on board unless you make that a number one contender. Unless, but then that's the thing. You're making, you're gifting that to Kamzat, who's been very inactive. Best win was Gilbert Burns, who, you know, very close fight, went <laughs> life and death with a pumped up lightweight. How's he going to handle the big boys in the middleweight. I think that the fight with Paulo would be a great fight for Kamzat. I don't know why that's not happening. They have great built-in publicity. Vittori needs to fight someone. But because he's on back-to-back losses, I mean, granted, he lost to Bobby Knuckles, which doesn't hurt your stock, really. But that beat down, and it, it was it was painful to watch, man. I don't, I don't. Like he has to do something big to sort of get back on the mountain. Because if he if he loses another, I don't think he's going to be on the title contention ever again. You can't really say ever again, but. He will be well, down the line. Well, that may it depends on who's the champ and all that. But we're assuming that the long term, right? Uh, unless he decides to move up, you know. But he, again, you know, he does want new blood, and we we got the Uh I would also would like to see Strickland fight Izzy. I think Strickland could get it. Like I, I was talking to. One of my uh, couple of my friends, way back um, before Para and Strickland and Kiernair and Izzy, like a week before that, I was saying, you know, I really do hope Strickland wins so he can fight Izzy because I think he has the ability to do it, get it done. But then he gets his ass knocked out, and now he's training with uh, Pierre. So mm-hmm. I'm very curious to see how that plays out. Because I think this weekend will show a lot of uh, what's, what's been going on with Strickland, you know? Because, I mean, he took that fight on short notice and beat the crap out of that guy. Which is the same guy who got that known... Well, I mean, he's kicking uh, Chris Curtis's ass until the headbutt and, you know, 
no contest. All right, John, let's let's hop into the lightweight division. Let's talk right. about uh, Oliveira fighting uh, Benny Darius. And so, um, go ahead, lead off, John. Go. I know you want to knock right. this out the park. Go ahead. You 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 guys remember I was very down on uh, Charles Oliveira. I said, you know, I was like, it's absurd if Charles wins, you you can't rematch them with Islam. You have to do the BMF or you have you know this or that. I eat crow. I was wrong. Charles went out there and was a stud. That's the Charles that was champ. That, like, I don't, I, I truly believe that missing the scale, losing the title and the belt, having to fight some random guy, Islam, Khabib's protege, like, he just gifted this chance to fight for your belt because it got taken from you in his backyard. You asked to be have it in Brazil, and they denied you. You have to go all up there. I'm sure all that fucked with them, and it was a fairly quick turnaround from the Gaethje. So, and, and he's talked about how it was mentally affecting him and everything. And you know, he's had a nice long break, and he walked out, and he got taken down by a, a skilled wrestler, and he handled he he handled it quite well, and then he just. He finished Benny. He finished the top five guys of the division in less time it, than it took for Khabib to beat a real estate agent to become the champion. Charles is a beast. He finishes uh, Darius and Gaethje in round one. He finishes... Chandler at the start of round two, just beating the crap out of him, and he finished uh, Dustin, the pre annual gatekeeper, in round three with a uh, standing naked choke after going, you know, beating the crap out of him. Yeah, he goes, he, it, and he, yeah, he gets beaten a bit. He, he takes a bruising, but he just keeps going forward, and his recovery is insane. And if you do get on top of him when he's trying to, like, recover, well, we were like, oh, well, Islam's just going to fight. Well, we saw Benny. Benny got on top of him when he hurt him, and he was able to handle it. He was able to fight off his back, and then he got, got up and started beating the crap out of him. So there's no one else that you can pick. There's no one else deserving of a title shot against Islam other than Volkanovski. But Dana White has said that if as soon as Volk defends and as soon as Islam defends, He's matching that up. And if Charles wins, they've said that they'll match that up with Volkanovski, which is a... Either way, it'll be a, a fantastic fight. So if we have that Charles Oliveira that fought, you know, Tony Ferguson that fought Michael Chandler that fought Dustin Poirier that fought uh, Justin Gaethje that fought Benny Garish, he can beat Islam. Especially now that he's seen that that air mystique has been broken by Volkanovski, and now he's got the confidence. You know, he spoke that English. You know, he's he really brought that hype. So I, I predict when he fights Islam, and it, and if and when he wins, he'll have even more English to speak. The fact that he said, I want to go to his backyard and I want to beat him there speaks of his confidence. There is a champion and his name is Charles. Which, if you're in the camp that believes Volkanovski did beat Islam, then, I mean, kind of true. I'm not going to lie. I missed most of that because I don't know if it was me that froze up or both of y'all. It just dropped out. I heard John. I heard John. Uh, I Okay. John, I agree with you. Like, if that's the Charles that we got fighting Islam again, I'm not going to lean either way. I'm just here to watch a good fight. 
because that Charles he he showed that he's a super saiyan because his hair was uh blonde again like always but this time it was uh you know the time when them super saiyans they lose one and they come back with the oh. tensu bean and come back and they're stronger yeah that was the charles. zenkai boost yes the that, zenkai was, boost. that was charles he came back ready to go and there okay interesting thing how many times do these dagestanis rematch with somebody Do they ever rematch with Never. anybody? Never. No, I don't think they have. It has RDA. RDA didn't rematch uh, Habib, right? Never, right? Mm -mm. No? Okay, so it would be the first time that we actually see one of these. Well, there's only two yeah. dominant Dagestanis right now. That here's it'd be here's the thing. Is, Islam has been, uh, you know, he tweeted immediately after the level six game. He's talking to shit, and he, he's... Almost trying to duck Charles, saying, you know, oh, I beat him decisively. I, what, you know. He's not lying. Yeah, he beat him decisively. But <laughs> he just did, an, he ended an impressive win streak. Who else are you going to fight? You're going to fight the guys that Charles beat? What other top five opponent has Islam fought? He, he, he has no right to deny Charles. Charles is the a dominant champ, and he still went and fought a eight-fight one-streak guy and beat him decisively. There's no reason to not take that fight, unless you know you don't have a good chance of winning. Oh, you saying so he's dominant. ducking. He's trying to duck. Mm-hmm. Because Charles, Charles knows, Charles knows how, how hard he hits and how good his striking is. He saw how he performed against Volk. He knows... What to do now? You know, yeah, I think he definitely drilled fighting wrestlers because you know he's fighting Benny. I think he like I heard something about him having like more uh, more time on the mats with wrestlers and all that. And so, if not Charles, who? It, it has to be him because he has smoked all the other top guys. Unless you're going to give another gifted title shot to someone undeserving. Because really, Islam beats Bobby Green. And he gets a shot at the man that just, like, pour through all of Khabib's greatest hits. Faster mm -hmm. and better. And you beat him. Clearly, he wasn't at his best. Like, you know what I mean? I think... Uh, uh, a champion with three defenses that were all finishes, all like him looking unstoppable. Because I'm not a fan of immediate rematches unless you're a long ring dominant champ. But he, well, he was only had three. one defense, right? No, he 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 mm -hmm. fought Chandler. That was for, for the vacant. Belt. Then he fought Dustin, and then he fought Gaethje. So he had one defense. Two defenses, definitely. He against Justin. The title was yeah. stripped from him when he fought Justin. That's fair. I would so say that doesn't really, really count. Defense. But he, in the hood, he, we know. We know in the hood. We know in the hood mm -hmm. he defended against Justin. That that micro pound or whatever it was. We knew. Who, we knew. We knew who he weighed in. We knew who he weighed awesome. in. Awesome. The fact that he weighed in at 154 this last fight. The scales won this time. Did. No, no. He, the, his team said that was a message. He is, I think he's so laser focused. So, but speaking of other lightweights, unless you guys have something, some argument against Charles fighting for the belt next. Because, so, like, I think it's kind of messed up that, you know, Islam fought, what, in January? February or January, early February? What was it, February? And he gets off until October. June. No, 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 uh, Islam, when he fight? Uh, Volk, was that February? Oh. Right? Middle of February or something? It was after the Super Bowl, oh, right? Or was it before the Super Bowl? It was after the Super Bowl, I'm pretty sure. It was the Super Bowl weekend? It was February 11th. Oh, that was the Super Bowl card? 
Mm-hmm. Holy shit. Damn. Okay. The Super Bowl card actually came through for once. For yes. fight fans. Real fight fans, not casuals. And he doesn't have a fight lined up yet because of uh why? Does he have an injury? Uh they gave it to him off. Um Dan he'd be fighting in October, which I don't think he is injured. Uh he you know, he has Dagestani privilege. It's Ramadan has uh it ended on four twenty, I believe so. Uh Bilal and Kamza both fought during Ramadan. Like why should you get I don't know. There he's a little more strict on his religion, I guess. But I mean it's also just the fact that they're trying to let things play out right now because there is no clear number one until after the Charles Oliveira fight. So sure. I think they were just trying to let things kind of play out for now. I think they were trying to figure out if Connor was going to fight Chandler, if Dustin and Gaethje actually do something spectacular. But I think right now there is no argument that Oliveira deserves the title shot 100%. Yeah, I mean, who's going to say otherwise? I mean... Right. So, besides Connor, <laughs> so, and besides Gaethje, Connor, but he Gaethje and Oliveira fought. Even entered the Usada pool, so fuck him. Right. So they fought in May, and then he fought Islam in October, and then Islam uh, fought Volk in February. He has fought since. I, you know, it just it seems a little like it, it seemed like a, a pretty quick turnaround. You know what I mean? For that, an average turnaround, an average fighter usually fights every three to four months, so that's about an average turnaround. Well, Charles, okay, that fight was supposed to happen in May, May sixth, I believe, and who got hurt? Somebody. It was undisclosed, right? Somebody got hurt. Who got hurt? Charles or Benny? And they uh, Charles back. did because Benny was upset about it. So they pushed it back to oh. June. And that's where we're at here. Just real life stuff. Injuries and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Now, do you think this... So Benny has always been on the cusp. You know, he's an a afterthought. Do you think this hurts his stock? Benny Yes yeah, I'm and talking no. about Yes and no. Because, I mean, he's a good fighter, and, you know. He's been around if, for a while. If, if mm-hmm. he were to fight, I, I hope he matches up with the loser of the VMF. I hope they give him someone, he's you know what I mean? Fiz- 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 or Gamrat. Really? I think he should fight Fiz- 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 Because Fiz- 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 he beat Gamrat. Okay, then he's fighting Fizz, 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 Fizzy. Fizzy. He's fighting Fizzy. So, Fizz. really messed up is the, it's a Gamrot, in my opinion, and it's an expert opinion, lost to Armin. My expert opinion. Yes. I, I'm an, I'm an expert on this. <laughs> I am an expert in opinions. Oh, uh, this is just a fact. Uh, ask anyone of uh, repute, and they will tell you that Volkanovski is double champ. Max Holloway is uh, the king of featherweight. He's going to go to featherweight while... Uh, I don't know. Thank you, John. I, I appreciate what you're saying. I Yes. I agree with you, because I, <laughs> I agree with that statement. Yes. Yes. But no. The hard facts is Volkanovski is truly the goat of featherweight. I mean, you can't say otherwise. I mean, he beat Aldo, he beat Holloway two times, and I... everybody else. Yeah, he finished Chandler. He made Chandler say no mas. Uh, the only person he didn't fight that was solid at featherweight was Connor, but I do not see Connor making that weight. I honestly don't see Connor making fifty five. So if he does fight Chandler, I think that fight's gonna be at one seventy. Hey, have you guys watched I, any of the Ultimate Fighter yet? So from what I, I so 
someone and in his team was saying that he's not going to go in the pool because he it's going to probably be two years to fully like have all the whatever drugs to fully heal that leg. And apparently they're also shopping around for other fights because apparently apparently he's no longer in the channel. Might have been something. Uh, I don't know. Maybe something happened on the backstage or something. You know, Connor. Connor would be blessing Chandler with red panty night. Oh, oh wow! Where where did everybody go? Oh God! I'm on the um, can you hear TV. Me? Hello. I am here. Can you hear me? I just camera issues. Hello. Well. Currently, Connor is 0-3 right now in the Ultimate Fighter. <laughs> it's looking pretty sad. I think his team is all the uh, up-and-coming guys. The I don't know what they're called. The upstarts, the young, young bucks. I don't know what they're called. And then Chandler's team's all the gritty veterans that are like... They had their shot in the UFC and they got cut and whatnot. I think, I think. I haven't really so, paid too much attention, but man, some of these dudes are getting the second the second episode. The dude got kneed in the face so nasty, and Connor's just like, oh. but Connor as a coach, he's 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 one hundred percent for his guys. Like he's a good coach. So, I I'm curious because you know Tony Ferguson. Got his start on Ultimate Fighter, and his coach mm-hmm. that helped him immensely was Brock Lesnar, who a lot of people, a lot of hardcore, snubbed their nose at him. But Brock Lesnar was a very impressive fighter for the era of the smell test for drug testing. And if he had started MMA like younger, he would have been uh, an all time goat. His, his combine numbers are freak. He's the freak nature of nature, but he's also a good coach. Like he apparently helped uh, Tony a lot, and they still remained in contact despite you know Brock being a reclusive person. Um, and like uh, Tony was saying, back when he was prime Tony and everything, prime time, he uh, mm-hmm. he brought up something that really stuck with him that Brock told him. That like was a, he attributed a lot of his success to, and uh, so I also like that Tony Ferguson is a is a huge Oliveira fan because you know he's like Tony never ducked me, or, or not Tony Charles never ducked me, all these other people ducked me all the time just been shit. Yeah, so real, real, real ass dude. Uh, and I, I, I think Charles also gets the, like, the fact that he's been in the UFC so long, he has so many fights under his belt, he has the most submission wins, he's just done the incredible things as, a, as he's over his entire career. And the fact that he went on that tear and he beat all these guys that could be beat faster and more impressively has a, has something bad happen, you know, call it an off night or whatever. He admits that, goes out there, shows that he's the same guy again. Now, if that fight had gone any longer, if it was a decision, if it was a close-running thing, any of that, the, the story would be different, right? But the fact that it was so decisive and that Charles looked so good on the feet, on his back, being, you know, out-wrestled by a guy, getting on the guy, you know, I, all around. He, he just looked impeccable. So, like, who else does he need to fight to get a title shot? Because he's beat all the top guys. The only one has to be Islam. John, so you're thinking that he's not going to get the title shot? I, I, uh, I, it would be madness for them not to do it. The only thing I can see holding up would be Islam and his uh, corrupt, greedy. Uh, or I'm, I'm sorry, 
his uh don't ever ask about uh why Ali of uh, the Z's that can't can't leave the country. Well, I mean, when it comes to the UFC, they call the shots, not the fighters. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if Islam is going to continue to hold up the division, all they're going to do is make an interim belt and be like, well, no matter what, whenever you come back, you got to fight them for this interim belt or unify it. So regardless, Charles is either going to fight the winner of the BMF title fight for mm-hmm. an interim championship, and then when Islam decides to come back, he gets that he, that fight regardless, the winner of that, or he fights Charles because, like you said, it makes no sense for him to not fight somebody unless Connor says otherwise. That's the only way. I, I think the most likely, if it's not Charles, the most likely, most likely situation is they use the winner of the BMF belt. Because that BMF belt is basically a way to give both those fighters relevance when they are teetering in irrelevance in the title shot picture right now. But can... Alright. But that's the thing is they were both stopped dramatically by Khabib and stopped by Charles, you know. But they were not did. stopped by Islam. Correct, and that, He's that is make his fair. Own story. Mm-hmm. But MMA math and all that, and do we really want to see a Dagestani wrestler versus a striker again? You really want to see a guy that you know guys have been subbed, taken to the ground, fucked up. Yeah, they don't have the necessary skills to beat that. You know what I mean? They, they just match up poorly, and it's going to be a boring fight, right? No, let me tell you, you why can... it's going to happen, John. I know why this is going to happen. It's because in America, we don't send our children to go wrestle bears. Correct. That's why this is happening. Well... We have a different tradition. We have more uh, folksy technique, chain wrestling. There's a certain certain guy that our dear friend B Dubs loves to to shit on, who I personally love. You know, Colby Chaos Covington doesn't rely on brute force. He does a lot of that train wrestling, trips, folksy stuff. Uh, that's the American fact. I would love to see him fight a Dagestan. Which could could directly happen if uh, if Leon gets off his ass and finds the fight. Oh, they say I haven't announced that one, huh? Oh, we yeah. jumping way ahead of, like, Islam going up a weight class, huh? Well, he's already tried. Like, that immediately after Leon beat Usman, he threw that out there, and he threw it out there a few other times. So, and Dana, Dana poured cold water on it. He's like, no, he, he has to defend his own, like, at his weight class. Yeah, prove yourself at your own weight class first, because in all honesty, as much as he looks like a great champion, he does not have a great resume. It, oh, oh, well, I, I don't think it looks like a great champion either, because... Like the Volk fight. It, it, if you look like that, if you get your, your butt kicked for. You know what I mean? It, it just. It, it, taking scoring out and all that, just having a smaller guy do that to you, you really want to jump up. The, the Uno well, card on that, the Uno reverse on that, is that Volk is considered one of the greatest mixed martial artists of all time. So, therefore, a loss to him barely well, blemishes your uh, record. According to Islam, he should be the pound for pound because he beat Okanovsky and John Jones. He just fought some nobody for a vacant vote, and he doesn't deserve to be pound for pound. These, this is what uh, Islam is arguing. 
according to Juliana Pena, she's the goat of fucking female MMA. People are delusional. Hey, but, uh, with, uh, Benny Darius, though, I'm gonna hop back a few topics. His stock didn't really drop. I feel like if he loses his next one, he'll stop. His stock will drop from there due to the fact that, you know, he was on that that come up and then it got shattered by fighting a former champion. So where he goes from here, like I said, he's going to either fight Fizzy or possibly the loser of the BMF. Well, what about Armin? Saryukin? Mm-hmm. He trying to, uh, isn't he trying to fight Patty? Oh, no, that's Tapura, right? He, yeah, Tapura's no, trying yeah, to fight Tapura. Patty. Armin, Who's he, he, who's he uh, fighting next? Don't he got to fight he, Armin he, just fought. He just fought. Yes, or the Saturday. He just fought this he, past Saturday. He looked, uh, yeah. he didn't destroy the guy like he was predicted to, right? The Brazilian no, guy, he, right? He he got wobbled, and it, it like people were like, oh, wow. Like, he looked uh, beatable, but then he, you know, he went, he won TKO Punch and all that. And, um, you know, because people had been ducking him, and he was calling out Chandler. He's like, you know, Connor. Yeah, hey, you know, yeah, yeah. He said, you're not getting that fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Because Honestly, we have, bro, yeah. hey, if he gets caught by Chandler, it's, it's, it's game over. Uh, dude. Yes. <laughs> that's an instant boost or killer. Yeah, yeah, dude. I, dude, Chandler, love him or hate him, bro. He's good. Like he mm-hmm. he only loses to good people. Like literally, everybody he's lost to is literally one, two, three. I uh, war. It's not no easy task. He's just not losing. He's he's putting a hurting on him as well. So it's like, dude, he's I, good. It was a. It was a war with Charles, because, I mean... It was a war with or... Dustin? It was a, a... How many rounds was the uh, Gaethje fight? Three or five? That was uh, both three. It was a, yeah. a, a fucking mayhem for three rounds with Gaethje. Yeah, that... That was, that was a rough one, the year. man. That was a rough one. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't watch that live. Or did we? <laughs> Did we? We was watching on the bus. <laughs> Who was doing? Yeah, we were trying to watch that one on the bus. <laughs> I, I just don't see Chandler being on the road to champ uh, championship fight. You know what I mean? Man, it don't matter, man. He's he's our new cowboy. But hey, he's, all right. When so you got I'm, a name like Chandler does, you're always in the mix. So period. out of out of Chandler. Justin and Justin, I think Chandler has a has a better skill set and chance against Islam. I agree with you. I totally agree with you. Yes, one hundred percent. I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. His he has brute force. He has wrestling, and he is just insanely powerful. He will take. He will take it, and he will go to the ground with you. Yes. Like he, he he went down with Oliveira, hey. no hesitation. Where, you know, Dustin and Justin were kind of, uh, and, and he's strong. You saw what he did to Dustin, how he picked him up yeah, off the yeah. floor, just to uh, yeah. flex him. Or when Charles is on his back and he he like jumped up and slammed the back. He just like he did that jump up. He's a freak athlete. Yep. Granted, I mean, you'd expect that with all the gear he's on, but all the what? The what juice. That? He's on juice. Juice. Yeah, he's very clearly juice. To the like, juice. like goes to juice bars. Yeah, yeah. Acai. Uh, what? Like, um, what, what is he? Like, he's drinking boba. What, what, what's H- going on? Hgh. Uh, you think Hicka, so? D ball trend. So Usad is just a uh, myth. It, Usad is a a joke. Uh, it, 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 there's so many ways to cheat. Um, I, I was reading uh, this guy that that's in like 
he, he essentially like broke down how you get through it and all that. And IVs is a big one. And the way the wording IVs is, are also illegal. So the wording is very ambiguous on that because it's like you can only do it X amount, but have it administrated, and you can take it out of one arm, put it in the other, back and forth, back and forth. God damn. The Lee Lee's is like it. it you saw that it is just there to provide the veneer of legitimacy and to filter out people that don't aren't smart enough to, you know, get around it. And like, you know, John Jones's peckagram isn't even a thing anymore. They don't even care about that. Those picograms that are in there. I mean, yeah, they 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 give leeway to their stars. I'm not gonna lie, but it usually comes out as a controversy first, though. Well, the the big thing now is like designer, because they can only test for what they have in the lab to what they're looking for. So there's a uh, lot you can just order this stuff online right now, or go to like. Uh, some of these countries, right, I'll just tweak the formula just a little bit so it's not being able to be picked up on the test. But it still has all the effects that you're looking for. And then you also have all the um, experimental research drugs that aren't for human consumption. People use on themselves. Uh, they're real popular uh, online and you can buy them. Uh, it's, it's a real big thing in the bodybuilding community right now uh, called SARMs. So there's like a, a whole plethora of stuff out there. Uh, and there's another chemical that's very similar to EPO, but it's very hard to detect. So uh, certain guys, you can just look at their physique and tell. Uh, if you look at Bilal and you look at Kamar Usman, the telltale signs of their jaw and their earlobes, their face growing bigger, and the fact that they get knockout power in their mid thirties out of nowhere. Dude, and they're all past their mid thirties, isn't he? I feel like that man's like forty almost. And they're all managed by Ali, and he also does HG. You can tell by his, like, look at his younger photos and his older, like, his face is definitely, like, certain features have grown, and his is, like, yeah. Oh, Darius is only 34. Surprising. All right. Oh, not yeah, bad, Darius. Hey, guys, we're getting right. off topic, so oh, sorry. Let's, uh, let's end this one. Since we was talking about the lightweight division, we, we got this as Charles should be fighting Islam. Benny will be fighting the winner out of, or the loser of the Dustin Justin fight, correct? The BMF, yes. If Islam doesn't fight Charles, then somehow, some way, Connor got back into the title mix. Just by saying, I want to. Yep. I think Connor would probably go to the 170 if he wants a title shot. Hey, if he wants just the walk into a title shot, I think he would go to the 170 just so he has the chance of getting the tr triple champ. You know what I mean? He he got to beat Michael Chandler at 170 to do that, I feel. And that's his only way to there. I'm starting to more and more believe that Michael Chandler versus Connor is never going to happen. They could just be holding off on like announcing it until the end of the season. Well, the thing that I was saying is like there's there's a in order to fight this year, he has to get into the USADA pool by the end of the month. He has yet and to do that. He has yet to get into the USADA pool. So unless they pull a Brock Lesnar and be like, "All right, fuck it, we'll just let him fight." Um, yeah. Plus, he has his like you know sexual assault allegations that he has to fight right now. Yeah, because you know. False. And, uh, yeah, which like one? The, the most recent one? The one at the Miami game? Yeah. Yeah, supposedly when he did that, right? 
a couple minutes later, he's like taking pictures with this lady. And I don't believe he did that to this lady. Because if you see this lady, you would understand. That's all I have to say about that. He's taking pictures with her, and they're all cordial and stuff. It's like, if this guy just tried to, like, rape you, you wouldn't be taking pictures and smiling and stuff, right? Right. You'd be in a panic still. So, I don't think that's going to fly. I, th- I I really believe Connor this time, and he's saying this lady's trying to extort him. So, it is what it is with that one. Good try, lady. <laughs> All right, but on that note, we're going to zip it up and zip it out. Yes, sir. All right, guys, if you like that content. Oh, oh, yeah, John, go ahead. Go ahead. You the outro. Go ahead, John. Outro. Thank you for listening to our wonderful podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, comments, we would love to hear from you. Uh, We'll definitely reply. Uh, And until next time. Zip it up and zip it out.